Hi, my name is Carla. I am a registered nurse. And today we're going to be talking about the five commonly missed questions that you are going to find on the HESI exam. So some of the five questions that you're going to see are the working backwards to find the micrograms per kilogram per minute, dilution of full strength formulas, ratio concentrations, fluid resuscitation using the Parkland formula, and finding the body surface area. So let's look at each of these types of math problems that you're going to encounter in the HESI. We're gonna go through these problems pretty quickly, but if you want more detailed explanation of each of these problems and how to solve them, I can make another video for that. Just let me know in the comments below. The first problem set that we're gonna be looking at is finding micrograms per kilogram per minute. Now in the HESI, they make it complicated like this because typically in nursing school, you're gonna find that you have to find milliliters per hour, but that they will provide you with the micrograms per kilogram per minute, but not the HESI. They get a little more complicated. So let's find the microgram per kilogram per minute for this formula here. So in this question, I see that a patient is receiving a dopamine solution of 400 milligrams per 250 milliliters of normal saline at 10 milliliters per hour. The patient weighs 187 pounds. How many micrograms per kilogram per minute is the patient receiving? Round to the nearest 10. To solve for this quick, uh, question, I am going to use the dimensional analysis method. So what I'm going to do first, before I do anything, I'm going to write equals, and then what are they asking? Micrograms per kilogram per minute. So I'm gonna put equals micrograms, and I'm gonna write it in this format, per kilogram per minute. This is the appropriate format to write it. So how do I figure out micrograms per kilogram per minute? Well, I'm gonna look back to this question, and I'm gonna see if I find any information that can give me either micrograms, kilograms, or minutes. So I see a patient is receiving dopamine 400 milligrams per 250 mLs. Well, I know that I can convert those milligrams to micrograms, so I might go ahead and do that before I even plug that information into my dimensional analysis formula. What else do I see? I see 10 milliliters per hour. Well, I know that I need minutes, but hour is also a unit of time, so I know that I can convert those hours to minute at some point. What else do I need to solve? I need kilograms. Well, I see that my patient weighs 187 pounds. I know that I can convert those pounds to kilograms, so it looks like I have all the information I need. Let's go ahead and plug in some of the information that we can find in the question. So first, 400 milligrams per 250 mLs. I know I need micrograms, so I'm gonna convert those milligrams to micrograms. I know that one milligram is the same as 1,000 micrograms. So to convert 400 milligrams to micrograms, I'm going to have to multiply 400 by 1,000. So 400 times 1,000, and that gives me 400,000 micrograms. Now don't panic when you see such a huge number. As long as you are doing the correct steps, no need to panic. So 400,000 micrograms. So now I have 400,000 micrograms per 250 mLs. This doesn't change any of the information. This is only providing me with a new unit. So I have 400,000 micrograms. Now, does that go in the numerator in the, or in the denominator? Well, let's look to see here. In the answer, I need micrograms in the numerator. So I'm going to put 400,000 micrograms in my numerator, and its pair, its partner, is that 250 milliliters. So that's going to go in my denominator. Now, I have micrograms in my numerator, good, that's what I need, so far so good. But now I have milliliters in my denominator and I don't need milliliters for my answer. So I need to figure out a way to cancel out those milliliters, but then also figure out something that's going to provide me with kilograms in minutes. Let's go back to the question. So I see 10 milliliters per hour. That's perfect, I need to cancel out those milliliters and I need time in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put those 10 milliliters in my numerator and that immediately helps me cancel out that unit, those milliliters. And I can put hours in the bottom. Now, before I do that, let's do it in a more condensed format. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simplify this by instead of putting an hour in my denominator right now and then having to convert, I'm gonna convert beforehand. So we know that one hour is the same as 60 minutes. So instead of putting 10 milliliters over an hour, I'm gonna put 10 milliliters over 60 minutes. Now, what does that do? That gives me now micrograms per minute. Ooh, I'm getting so close to the answer that I finally need. And now I'm just missing kilograms. So do I see anywhere that I can get kilograms from in the question that they provided? 
I see 187 pounds. Well, I know that one kilogram is the same as 2.2 pounds. So to convert 187 pounds to kilograms, I'm going to have to divide. So 187 divided by 2.2, and that gives me 85 kilograms. Now I have kilograms, so what do I do? I need that in my numerator or in my denominator. Well, let's look at my answer. I see kilograms is in my denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those 85 kilograms in my denominator, and I'm just going to put it under the 1. Now let's look. In my numerator, the only unit that I have is micrograms. Perfect. That's exactly what I need. In my denominator, I now have minutes and kilograms, also what I need. So now I can go ahead and solve. So let's do 400,000 times 10, because of, from those 10 milliliters, so 400,000 times 10. Ooh, big numbers. Trust the process. Let's keep going. And I'm going to divide that by 250 times 60 times 85. And that gives me a final answer of 3.13725. Now this has not been rounded. We are going to go back to the question and we're gonna to try to figure out what they need for our rounding. So what do they say? Round to the nearest 10th. So first I need to find what's in my 10th place. Well, that's that one right there. So to round, I'm gonna to look to the number directly to the right, and that value is a three. Because it is a three, that means I need to round down. So my final answer is going to be 3.1 micrograms per kilogram per minute. The next question that we are going to be looking at is how to dilute full strength formulas. In the question here, I see that a patient has a gastrostomy tube and is prescribed to receive a bolus feeding of 250 milliliters of Lucerna, 60% enteral formula. How many, with how many milliliters of water should the nurse dilute the full strength formula? So our order is to give 250 milliliters that has a 60% concentration in it. So how many milliliters of water do you as a nurse have to use to dilute that 100% initially full strength formula to get it down to that 60%? So what we do for this formula is we are going to do 250 milliliters times that 60%, but we are going to write that 60% as a decimal, formula, um, decimal format. So 60% is the same as 0.6. So 250 milliliters times 0.6, and that gives me 150 milliliters, but that's not my final answer. So 150 milliliters. From those 150 milliliters, all that tells me is that that is the 60% um, glucerna formula. So of those 250 milliliters total that I have to give, these 150 milliliters are how much of the formula is being given. So what total do I have to give? I have to give 250 milliliters. And of those 250 milliliters, 150 are the formula. So how do I figure out how much I need to include with water? Well, I'm just going to subtract 250 milliliters minus 150 milliliters, and that gives me 100 milliliters. So to dilute this 100% glucerna formula that we started with, to dilute it down to the 60%, we are going to add 100 milliliters of water. So now the concentration will be 150 milliliters of the glucerna and 100 milliliters of the water. And that will give me the total 250 milliliters that I need to give to the patient. So my final answer is that I need to give 100 milliliters of water. The next problem set that we are going to be looking at is figuring out how to dilute to a certain concentration ratio. When we look at this problem, we see that a patient has an acetaminophen toxicity and they are prescribed a loading dose of six grams of acetylcysteine. Acetylcysteine is available as a 20% solution of 200 milligrams per milliliter. How many milliliters of the diluent should you add to the medication for a one to four concentration? Now to figure this out, I am going to first have to figure out how much of the medication in milliliters the patient is going to receive. Now you can use different formulas. 
you can use the d over h times q, or you can use the dimensional analysis. So let's start here. I'm gonna use the d over h times q. So the order is six grams, and available and quantity is 200 milligrams per ml. So if I use my d over h times q formula, I know that my D is my six grams. So I can go ahead and write six grams. I know that my H is the 200 milligrams and my Q is milliliters. Now my grams and milligrams currently do not align. So I'm gonna to have to convert one to the other. So I'm gonna do 600 grams and I'm gonna convert that to milligrams. I know that one gram is the same as 1,000 milligrams. So to convert those six grams, I need to multiply by 1,000 and that would give me 6,000 milligrams. So I'm getting rid of this now. Now it's replaced by 6,000 milligrams. So now let's do 6,000 milligrams divided by 200. Now I got 30. So 30 and then multiply that by those ml, so 30 milliliters. So far, I know that this patient needs to get 30 milliliters. Now, unfortunately, that's not the end of the problem here. We need to figure out how much water or diluent, whatever solution you're going to add, to dilute this to a one to four concentration. And all that one to four concentration means that one fourth of the liquid is going to be those 30 milliliters, that medication that's prescribed. And the rest of that, so the other three fourths, is going to be the diluent, whatever it's going to be diluted with. So how do I figure out this concentration of water that's going to be provided? Well, or diluent, whatever the solution might be. Well, I need to do 30 milliliters times four. And where do I get that four? I get that from that one to four concentration. So what I'm trying to solve for right now is the total amount of solution that is going to be in my um, liquid that I'm going to be giving the patient in that reconstituted liquid. So it's going to be 30 times four. So what is it? It's 120 milliliters. So this is the total amount of liquid that is going to have the combination of medication and the diluent, but that's not my final answer. They want to know how much of the diluent is added. So I know that 120 is the total. Well, of that 120, I know that 30 milliliters is going to be the medication. That must mean that the other part of it is going to be my diluent. So how do I figure out my diluent? Well, all I do is I subtract 30 milliliters from those 120 milliliters. And that gives me, let me just double check, make sure what I thought in my head is the same as what I get on my calculator and that gives me 90 milliliters, yes. So my final answer is that I need to add 90 milliliters of diluent to attain a one to four concentration. The next problem that we're going to be looking at is figuring out the amount of fluid that we need to give to a burn client based off the Parkland formula. Here I see that a 200 pound patient is admitted with 60% full thickness burns throughout his body and they want to know how many milliliters of fluid resuscitation the patient should receive in the first eight hours. So before I even do this, I need to know Parkland's formula. Well, Parkland's formula says that you need to get four milliliters for the amount of the percentage specifically of burns times the kilograms. So to figure this out, I need to just go ahead and plug this in. But you need to remember with the Parkland's formula, you do half of the fluid resuscitation in the first eight hours and the other half in the next 16 hours. And that will give you the total 24 hour period. For our question, they are asking the first eight hours. So make sure you don't miss that. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in. So four milliliters and the total body surface area for my patient was 60%. And I'm gonna leave it as a percentage. I'm not gonna change it to a decimal. And I'm gonna multiply that by kilograms. Well. I'm provided pounds, so 200 pounds to kilograms. To figure that out, I'm going to do 200 divided by 2.2, because I know that one kilogram is the same as 2.2 pounds. So I get about 90.9 kilograms. So I'm gonna plug that in 90.9 kilograms. Now, when you do the Parkland's formula, don't panic if you see a huge number. Remember, with burn patients, we need to give a lot of fluids to resuscitate them. 
So if you see numbers in the thousands of milliliters, that's probably the correct answer. So let's see, 21,818 milliliters. Now, I round it to a whole number. This is the amount that my patient would be receiving in a 24 hour period, but they wanna know how much he's getting in the first eight hours. And if you remember what I stated, for the first uh, eight hours of that 24 hour period, we give half of that solution. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that by half. And that gives me 10,909 milliliters. And again, I rounded to a whole number. So in the first eight hours, my patient is going to receive 10,909 milliliters. The last problem sets that we're going to be looking at are figuring out the body surface area of a patient based off of their weight and height. Now, before we can do this, we need to figure out what the formulas are. Well, these are gonna take a lot of memorization if they're not provided for you. So the formula is going to be meters squared equals the square root of pounds times inches divided by 3,131. This is going to be using the pounds and inches. The other formula is going to be using centimeters and kilograms. So it's the same format. It's going to be meters squared equals the square root of centimeters times kilograms divided by, now here's where the number changes, 3,600. So all you essentially have to do for these formulas is plug them in. The biggest problem is trying to memorize these formulas. So here I need pounds times inches. Well, I have given, I have been given kilograms. So what I have to do to figure out my pounds is I'm going to multiply eight times 2.2 and that gives me 17.6 pounds. So 17.6 pounds. So all I have to do now is plug in all of this information. So the square root of 17.6 pounds times those 25 inches divided by 3131. So let's go ahead and figure that out. And that gives me 0.3748. That gives me 0 0.3748. Now I can go ahead and round this to whatever value they tell me. Let's say they told me to round this to the hundredths place. Well, if I were to round that 0.3748, my seven is in my hundredths place, so I look to the number directly to the right, that's a four, that means I need to round down. So my final answer would be my BSA equals 0 0.37 meters squared. Now let's look at the bottom question here. It's essentially the same thing, only we're given centimeters and kilograms. So again, all we have to do is plug it into the formula. So 20 kilograms times 65 centimeters divided by 3,600. And that gives me 0 0.06009. So for this one, I get 0 0.6009. Again, I am going to round this to my uh, tenths place now. Well, I was going to say hundreds, but there's nothing in the hundreds, so I'm just going to round it to my tenths, and I would get 0 0.6 meters squared as my final answer. So these are some of the commonly missed questions that you're going to encounter on the HESI. Some of them have to do a lot with memorization of the formulas, such as the Parkland formula or the body surface area formula. And some of them, you have to know the proper method of inserting them into the formula, for example, the dimensional analysis, and knowing what they are asking of you. If you want a more thorough, detailed explanation, you can go ahead and message me here, leave a comment below, or watch some of these next videos.